one. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Ed Talk TV, conversations worth having. I hope you are having a great afternoon, morning, evening, wherever you're tuning in from. If this is your first time joining, welcome. My name is Ed. I'm your host, and I am the tech-savvy business strategist who helps overwhelmed business owners like yourself get uh, organized as well as overcome today's tech challenges. And on this show, we talk about business, tech, and the user experience. And you just never know what you're going to get. And we go live Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, right here on the page. So don't be afraid to like, follow, and see first my Facebook page if you like what I'm laying down here. Also, I put in the comments for you. If you go to checkwithed.com right after this broadcast and sign up to be on my newsletter, it's right there at the top. You just pop in your name and email, and then it's done. Then you will get a weekly recap, which I send out on Fridays, that have all the episodes. So it's basically a TV guide handed to you in your inbox. And not only that, I include tips, uh, things that I've been working on, sometimes discounts, all that good stuff. So be sure to join the email list if you haven't yet already. Also, you'll learn more about the Hey Ed community. That is amazing. Amazing. Hey, Mickey, welcome. Uh, for those who don't know, real quick, the Hey Ed community, you have to check it out because every business owner needs this. I know that you're probably like, Ed, yeah, it's something that you're selling, so of course you're going to think it's really awesome. This is true, but it's awesome because of the people in it and everyone who is part of it and they are telling you that too so don't just take my word for it take theirs too and check it out because it's amazing and there's so many exciting things in the works for the hey ed members also known as edsters so if you've been on the fence go take a look if you're kind of like i'm still on the fence let's talk let's get you set up and get you comfortable with it because I guarantee you, you won't be sorry and that you're going to be like, why did I wait so long? Why, why did I not do this sooner? I, I swear, I swear. So check that out and let me know if you have any questions around that. You can always hit me up on the website there. There's even a little chat bot, uh, chat button for you to talk to me because uh, I don't have a chat bot set up on my website. It's just a little chat button. Anyway, so that's that, and if you are uh, new, please be sure to comment and let us know who you are. Uh, we have a very active uh, viewership here on the show, even on the replay, so even if you're a replay viewer, you want to uh, make sure that you are not only watching, but you're commenting as well. Commenting's huge. You need to show up, deliver, and engage. Those are my three core values. That's what I teach you guys, and that's what I want you to do. Hey, Whitney, welcome. Uh, so, so many of you guys are popping in. I love it. Be sure to uh, share this out, tag your friends. And today, we are going to talk about Uber. Uber, it's in the news again, man. And before we do that, we're going to jump into random news. So while we're jumping into random news, I want you to let me know how many of you guys use Uber. Maybe it's regular basis, maybe it's once in a while. Just let me know there. Uh, Mickey says, Edster here, still wondering how people are running mo uh, millennium businesses without a Hey Ed community membership. I know, right? Hey, welcome, Kat. Hello, hello. Yeah, uh, Mickey is right. I, I don't know, you know, I I can't I can't say it enough, you guys. Like, it, it, yes, Hey Ed is, is, my, um, is my product, my service, but I'm telling you, that you're missing out if you're not in there because it is gold. Like what you get on a regular basis, you're not going to get anywhere else for the price. And I, and people still tell me it's too low. So I'm just going to say that and tell you like if you're on the fence, we need to talk and get you in there because exciting things are happening for that. So, And if you're looking for a list of trainings that we've already had in the community, I did do a post earlier here on the page if you're watching me on Facebook. And uh, the... The list is long, <laughs> and that's just that's just like a quick reference. So there's that. If you guys are curious about that, uh, so let's jump into random news before we get into Uber uh, because it this is this is going to be good when we talk about Uber. I'm really excited about this um, because it's a good story to talk about. So let's jump over to my other screen. How many of you guys have dogs? Raise your hand. I do. I have two. They're amazing. Uh, but now. They have their own playlist. I didn't create this playlist, though. Spotify did. So if you have 
dogs, you're going to want to make sure, oh, cat drives for Uber occasionally. Oh, I like this. This is going to be good. Uh, they made some major changes and I haven't been able to drive. Won't even let me change my account to my new name, so won't approve my car insurance. Oh, bummer. Bummer. Well, it will be interesting to get your take on what we're going to talk about today and if you've experienced this or have heard of this. So stay tuned if you can. Um, so how many of you guys have dogs? Even if you're watching the replay, let me know. Now you can have a 23, 25 uh, song playlist on Spotify for those dog parties. Now I will say, I haven't listened to any of these yet, but I will say this is actually pretty smart because I wouldn't, like, my boys don't have to, I refer to my dogs as the boys, uh, my boys don't have to listen to music, thankfully, to be fine in the house, but I will say that especially when you're training your dogs or if your dogs have anxieties and things like that, like leaving something on like the TV or music really helps. So to have a dog party playlist, I mean, I don't know how crazy the songs get, you know, like if they're like hip hop and, and your dogs like straight up go crazy house party, maybe this isn't the list for you, uh, but it's at least a good idea to start here and have that. Uh, Mickey says, I've never been in an Uber. Mickey, really? You're down in Southern California and you haven't had an Uber ride yet? Well, man, we got to check that out. Hey, Paula, welcome. Yeah, a playlist for dogs, right? It's, it's a good idea, though. Now, think about this, you guys. This is for something specific, right? Somebody created this specifically for what? Dogs. Not just any dogs, but dogs who want to party. So you can create your own playlist for something very specific for you. So like if you are... Let's say you're a, a personal trainer and you are creating a cycle, a spin class playlist. Well, chances are people are going to want to get those songs. And so why not create your own playlist? You're already doing it. Why not create it somewhere publicly where then you can share that out to people? Not only that, see, this is where I go again, giving you guys way too much. I know, I know, bad Ed. So here's the thing. When you create your playlist, let's say on Spotify, and you start to share it out, not only can you share the playlist, but what else could you do? What else could you do to get people back to your website? It's kind of a hint there, but, but can you guess, even if you're watching the replay? Paula says, don't feel bad. I took my first ride in a lift in June. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I, yeah I'm not a lift person. I haven't done Lyft yet. It's just, I have Uber and it's just easier. It, it, there is a weird thing about that, I know. Um, so when it comes to your playlist, and of course you can apply this to pretty much anything, but I'm using this as a specific example. Let's say you're a personal trainer. You created your playlist because you have to do it anyway. You decided, I'm going to go ahead and share it on Spotify, for instance, and then I'll share that link out. Well, that's great and all, but... You're sending people to Spotify, not what? That's right, your website. So what would you want to do then? You would want to take that link, pop it onto a page on your website, and send people that link, the link to your website. Because, why? The whole goal, the whole point of this game, this online game, is to get people to come back to your website. Not to Facebook. Not to Instagram, not to Spotify, to your website. You can push out on those other channels, but you need to come back to your website. And I will tell you that it's a beautiful thing when you can experience that in motion, when that's working. Uh, people have been hitting me up on my uh, website through the, the chat bubble. It's been awesome. They're, they're literally asking questions and connecting with me through the chat, which means... What I'm doing is working because they're getting back to my website, not my Facebook page, not my Instagram profile, my website. All Ed, right? No distractions. They can find what they need. They can ask their questions. So keep that in mind that that's what you want to do. So there is a mini training right there, see? And we're just getting started. I told you it's going to be good. Uh, so let's move over to... Another thing about our website, because this is a big one, and you guys, some of you, a lot of you, maybe, are going to experience this, so let's look at it. If your website is 
Give me a second because my computer is super slow. When I live stream, it can get really, really slow, so bear with me. Um, if your website, the URL, you know, that people type into the, the top here, if it does not have HTTPS, HTTPS, you need to contact your web host after this episode. Why? Because you need to get on that security. It's, it's all about security certificate. It, it, we won't go too far into it. I just want you to know that if your website doesn't show that, I'm going to go to my website here. See how it says HTTPS? It's secure, meaning you can feel comfortable being on my website, buying on my website, and putting in your information. If you go to someone's website that does not have that, you may or may not be able to view their website. That, that's the first thing. Uh, there are some times when your website can be uh, closed, meaning there'll be this big, and it's happened to my websites before because of the certificate, it had expired, and it just didn't auto renew like it was supposed to. So sometimes you'll go to someone's website and there's this big like, no, uh-uh, big red X, like not secure, and it's you're like, whoa, what? Like, this is a spam site, what? No, not necessarily, but you wanna prevent that from happening. So after this episode, go check your URL, Check to make sure it says HTTPS and then whatever your address is. If it doesn't, then you need to contact your web host and figure out how you can get that to work and have that security there. Okay? There. Done. There's another bonus for you. Mickey says, I did know about the security certificate. Changed mine to that a few months ago. Perfect. Yeah, it, it's something that's been around and that we all have hopefully done but there are still a lot of sites that haven't. And now Google's like, listen, we're gonna start blasting you out on the internet and, and just putting it out there because you didn't listen, you're not taking the steps, you're not taking this seriously, and we are. So we're gonna start basically public shaming you. So you don't wanna do that. Plus you want your uh, people, your audience members, to feel confident and feel good about showing up to your website and seeing your website, not this big error message or this big like security risk, like. Don't, don't do anything here. Be careful. We don't know if this is real or not. You know, you don't want to go through all that. So, so just do yourself a favor and do your audience members a favor, your visitors a favor, and get that taken care of today after this episode, okay? Uh, because the worst thing you can do is sit back and not change it. Do all of this work, this marketing, out on social media and everywhere else, and draw people back to your website. And then the first experience they have is, they can't access it or it's a flight risk. It's security, like don't do anything. How many of them are gonna come back? Slim to none. So take the steps today for that, okay? Now, Uber, Uber, Uber. First off, how many, even if you're watching the replay, how many of you guys know what Uber is? Let me know in the comments. Do you know what Uber is? If this is your first time watching, always have water nearby when you're doing a live stream because you need it. You need to stay hydrated. So what is Uber? Uber is basically a ride sharing app where you can basically request to be picked up via your phone through an app and be taken places. It's super convenient, super handy, and it's amazing, especially when you're traveling and you're in big cities and you most of the time feel like it's safer than taking one of those busted old yellow cabs, maybe white vans that kind of have signs falling off and people trying to get you to come in. Uh, sounds sketchy, I know, but hey, <laughs> there are things like that. Uh, Whitney says, yes, but never use them. Uber is a car transportation service. Yes, Mickey, perfect. Uber is my friend. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. I will say I don't use Uber a ton where I'm at only because I have my car and we're kind of in the country so I can get to where I need to with my car. Unless, you know, we're going to an event or something and everyone wants to be safe, then we'll use Uber. Um, or if I'm in the city or like when I travel back and forth to New York uh, for client work, I will always catch the Uber. Like that's like, that's the thing. You don't really take a taxi unless you can't get an Uber. It, it's really interesting. So Uber 
is very convenient, right? And this kind of goes back to what we've talked about if you've been watching the show, where we're always trading either our time or our money, right? So if you can't afford something, you can't afford to have a website built for you, a website that's going to make you money in the long run. But you can't afford it. Well, then you need to learn how to build a website. So that's, therefore, you're taking your time. And if your time, let's see, my computer totally froze, so I want to make sure I'm still alive. <laughs> there's like this weird, if you guys can still hear me, there's like this weird picture on my computer. Um, so, well, I have another viewer, so that's good. So it must be working and I'm just frozen. Anyway, um, when it comes to your time, then you have to study and do all of that. And then if you're wanting to, you can hear me. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, there's just a really terrible <laughs> picture of me sitting there. Let me see if I can share my screen, if that will change it or not. That's funny. Okay. Anyway, I'll just keep going. Um, so thanks guys for bearing with me on that. And so when it comes to uh, your time, then you have to go through and study. You have to learn how to uh, use the certain the service or uh, program or whatever it is you may be looking for. But if you don't want to do that, then you have to pay. So it's always time or money, right? And so with Uber, it's a convenience thing. You literally can just pull out your phone, tap on it, and keep moving forward. And then from there, you get to your destination. And you really don't have to think too much about it. You just go for it. And then it's, it's great. And then from there, you can keep moving forward. I'm going to, there we go. Perfect. Okay, cool. I had to just unplug and replug. So with Uber, it allows you to get to where you need to go quickly. And you really just request your service, get picked up, get dropped off, call it a day. And that's it, right? However, there's something happening. And it's being reported in Miami, but I'm sure that's not the only place. There's something happening. Do you guys know what it is when it comes to Uber and ride sharing? Well, specifically with Uber. Did you know, let me back up and say, did you know that they can add anywhere from $80 to $150 of an extra charge to your trip for, quote, what, did it, what do they call it? Um... It was, oh, let me see, it's, I wanted to make sure I said it right because it's really, really weird. Um, something about like excessive bodily fluids that can add a charge to your account. So it, it's really weird, but uh, you know, vomiting or bleeding out or whatever, they can add anywhere from 80 to $150 charge. Well, what's happening is that there are some Uber drivers who are adding that charge to customers' bills that didn't actually do that. Yeah, it's called the vomit fraud. And so there are, it's happening in Miami from this article that I was reading. And what's happening is drivers are picking you up, taking your destination, everything's good, they drop you off, and lo and behold later, if you check your bills, meaning the emails that you get from Uber, then you'll notice there's been a charge that's been added, anywhere from $80 to $150. And you're like, wait, what? And it's an adjustment. Uh, I think they refer to it on your bill. And so with that adjustment, come to find out from people who follow up because they check their bills, they find out that this is an ongoing issue where some Uber drivers are adding that fee because they know that they can. They're getting that extra money. They're pocketing that extra money because they know most people aren't checking their bills. Think about it. Uber's convenience. Put in your destination, get picked up, you're out, it's charged to your card. Done deal. Most people are very busy. They're not pausing to look at their bills. So what's an extra 80 to $150? I mean, for me, it's a lot. So I'm, I mean, I'm checking my bills left and right. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, if you're hustle and you're in the city and you're go, 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 maybe you're not checking those bills. 
Jacqueline says, why would you keep using them? Well, that that's that's another issue. Now, keep in mind, in the last month, um, just just kind of give you some uh, number a number here. Actually, throughout all of the drama that Uber's had recently uh, over the past few years, they're still on top, and they have now. Last month, they hit 10 billion trips, so they're still the leader, and so they're still working on going through you know this vomit fraud craziness um, and trying to figure out. And it's hard to, as a consumer, right, the customer, because if you do see that charge. There's really only a help option within the app, and then you have to email them, and then it can take a lot of back and forth. And I mean, to be honest, you know, who who's to say that you didn't vomit? Like, if the Uber driver, who's supposed to be the 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 um, resource, the expert, the the professional, if they say that you did it, and you say you didn't, I mean, it, it's he said, she said, right? So it's one of those things, and in some cases, they're even uploading photos, like showing photos, fake photos, of what happened in their car. I mean, that that it's, it gets bad, you know. It's not it's not just saying it; they're actually showing it, even though the person didn't do it. So, I figured this was conversations worth talking about, right? Because it's a business, and Uber is looking into it, of course, and trying to figure it out. And I thought, well, what do you guys think? What could make this better? Like, how how could you make this better? Because when it comes to building a business, running a business, you will constantly run into challenges, issues in some cases, right? And when you do, you have to brainstorm. You have to strategize. How can we make this better? How can we fix this? And so... What I want you to think about, and if you're watching the replay as well, like if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments because this is open dialogue. I want to hear from you guys. Just there's no right or wrong answer, but like what do you think Uber could do or even you could do to help protect yourself when it comes to this? Um, because, you know, um, there might be instances where you can't use anything else but Uber. Like maybe that's the only way you can get around or that's your preferred way and you're just going to take your chance because it hasn't happened yet. You know, think about that and share in the comments uh, what you what you think. I will say, because it's always always going right. How can I make this better is uh, the first thing I think as a consumer, as the customer, what we could do. And of course, I mean, you'd still have to email if something happened and show your proof. But in order to protect ourselves, one thing we could do, which is an inconvenience, right? But one thing we could do is we could videotape our exit of the Uber ride. Be like, here's me exiting the Uber. Look, all clean, all good. Bye, Jim. Thank you. And call it a day, right? Then you have proof, number one, which also has a date and time stamp to it. Then you also have the driver and his name, her name, and then it also sends a signal to them like, oh, we better watch ourselves. That one's a smart cookie. I don't know what they're going to do with that, but that's a smart cookie. Yeah? And that's free for you to do. It's just you have to think about it. Now, the other thing that Uber could do, and it will be interesting to see if they end up doing something like this, is they could start doing uh, implementing uh, dash cams. Think about it. A dash cam for inside for safety that every time you pick up someone, it automatically starts recording uh, or it records upon exit the last five or 10 seconds uh, before the person gets out. I'm just going with what pops into my head, you guys. It's one of those things that that's another way to help protect yourself, both the driver and the passenger in this case, right? So think about those types of things. Like when something comes up in your business or in someone else's business and it kind of catches your attention, ask yourself, how can I make this better? Practice that because that will get you in that motion for when things happen in your business. And it's really to just get that mindset going. I'm just checking to make sure. Um, oh, of course, as a, cons a customer, uh, make sure to check your bills regularly. Like when you get out of the Uber, check your bill. If it doesn't 
automatically happen, check it the next day. Like set those reminders. We have to do those things. Uh, it's a pain, but again, you either go for convenience and possibly get screwed over, or you make sure to follow up every time and, and put a little bit of effort into it and know that you're keeping on top of things. That's with any bill, not just your Uber bill. That's with any bill. I can't tell you guys how many people, when I used to work at Apple, how many people would come in wanting to update, uh, upgrade their phone and, of course, not knowing their password to get into their AT&T or Verizon or whatever account. I mean, that's, that's common. But a lot of people didn't even know where their bill was being sent because they have it on auto and because the secretary or so-and-so set it up and, and they don't even know which card or which mailing address it's your money. You need to know where it's going. Pay attention. Because if you don't, that's when you start losing your money. And that's when you start getting into trouble. And as a business owner, we're not trying to do that. We're trying to stay on top of things. So even if you're outsourcing that stuff, you still need to be aware of it and stay on top of it. Because at the end of the day, it's your money. And you need to be aware of what's going on with it. So Anyway, that's what I have for you guys today. I hope that was helpful and that you learned something new. And like I said, if you're on the fence with a Hey Ed, please reach out. We can talk and get you in there. Uh, some exciting stuff is going to be happening. More exciting stuff. I mean, it's always exciting in there. And um, I'm so happy that you guys joined me today. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll have a guest expert. Yeah, I'm super excited. And uh, when you're over at checkwithed.com, you'll see the email list. And then, uh, of course, you can always become a guest expert uh, here on the show if you want. All the information's over there as well. And let me just check the comments real quick. Unfortunately, I work with business owners all the time who don't keep track of, like you said. Yeah, see, I know, you guys. Business owners, we got we to gotta, like get strong, stand up. And you know, here's another secret. Are you guys ready? I'll, I'll let you get ready for this secret because I'm going to read the next comment for those who are watching the replay as well. You have a few seconds to get ready for this one. Um, Whitney says, side note, just went to my host to find out about the SSL. It was free and all I had to do was slide uh, to the op on position and I was good. Yes. Let's do Yes. There's a little uh, gif that I can do later. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Look at that, you guys. Whitney taking it to the home plate. Home run right there while listening, while learning from us, and implementing all at the same time during this time. Love it. Uh, so, yeah, when it comes to keeping track of your stuff, you guys, I'm talking about your logins, where you can make notes as well. Do me a favor. Please do me a favor. And do yourself a favor. And whoever you're about to work with, they will thank you for this. Are you ready? Lean in, because this is serious. A little closer. A little closer. Get one password. One. The number one. Password. Go download that today. That's all you need. It's free on your mobile device. Go get it. Create your password to get into it. It's like a vault. And start plugging in every single login you know into that and get in the habit of doing it every time you sign up for something. I know it sounds tedious, but you will thank me later. Your next person that you work with will thank you, and they'll be like, you are tech savvy. I, am, I appreciate you, I wanna work with you, and you can be like, thanks, Ed. You're welcome. See how that works? Everyone goes home winning. So, all right, guys. Thank you so much for your time and being here. And I look forward to seeing you guys back here, same time, same place. And don't forget to share, like, love, follow, see first, all that stuff. I know, <sighs> crazy. And I'll see some of you on the replay. Take care. What is the Hayed community? I'll let them tell you. I'm drawn to this community, Erica, because Listen, I'm going to make sure as a business person, I know you are as well, serious business women, we are, we're going to make sure that we're getting the content knowledge we need from the Hey Ed community. But I also want to laugh. I want to have fun. I want to enjoy my work day. And I know I'll get that balance in the Hey Ed community. I know he'll, yeah, he'll tolerate our tangents. And I think that's the perfect, the perfect way to have a really good engaged community. It's a perfect balance of yeah. business 
and fun, you know. And